Hello and welcome to another episode of Epic Geek Out, the only show on the internet where this guy always gets confused when he sees Boy Meets Grill on TV, thinking it's Boy Meets World. I'm your host, Chad. I'm your host, Rob, and today we're going to be reviewing FX's new show, The Americans. And that was a reference to Girl Meets World, which is coming out soon. They're actually filming this month. I'm so excited. And they casted... Uh, yeah, do you see girl. her? She looks really... Like, she'll be good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, Nothing gonna, to base it off of, but Gonna watch looks. the first episode and then never tune it again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. As always, you can check us out over at Twitter, at Epic Geek Out. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Epic Geek Out. And also check out the website, www.epicgeekout.com. But let's get into our review of The Americans. <laughs> So today we're talking about The Americans, a show that I personally have been looking forward to mm -hmm. um, for a while that, that just came out on FX. It stars Carrie Russell from Felicity fame and, and other various uh, television properties. And uh, Matthew Rice is the, uh, the, the husband in the scenario. Mm -hmm. And the basic plot of this is Homeland um, pretty much, but back in the 80s. <laughs> um, and it, reverse a little reverse bit. Reverse a little bit, yeah. Basically the, the premise is uh, during the Cold War, um, the KGB agents that came to America and posed as American families. Um, and then they did various spy activities throughout the United States. This follows one such family, um, the husband and wife, which, you know, they, they weren't always husband and wife. They were put here as agents and they developed into this. So you got the family drama of like them being forced to be husband and <laughs> wife with their kids the, who don't know, mm -hmm. all this stuff. Uh, basically going out about their, their missions and their exploits. Um, in the 80s, and there's also flashbacks to the early 60s when they're being trained and stuff like that. Um, so that's basically what we saw from the pilot, which was an hour and a half, so it was a little bit of a longer pilot than we're used to. Um, it's on FX, it. so it's it definitely has that edge, more like mm -hmm. um, like American Horror Story and stuff like that, where you know it's it's not your cable show, so you know kind of which the following kind of you know right that's true you that's know very broke true. that rule, but yeah. So I mean, I was kind of looking forward to it. The marketing very interesting and cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it's almost like an AMC type mm -hmm. type channel now with with the shows that they have out. So. What did you think of the first episode so far? So uh, the first thing that I learned from this show is that the Russians have the best dialect coaches that <laughs> yeah. at ever have existed. Uh, so, you know, they're supposed to forget that they had other lives and only exist in this American life and never speak any word of Russian, which is really convenient because they're American actors, you know, yeah, playing yeah. these Russian spies. So they seem as American as you could ever, you know... Like there's no there's no hiccups there's no anything it's it's they've been there for fifteen twenty years yes and they have and they have yeah. and you know it's I guess what they were going for but it, yeah. it kind of that took me out of it a little bit just because of how realistic uh, it was mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really get into this I don't think I'm going to continue watching uh, it just didn't really pique my interest I didn't know who I should be rooting for. I'm an American, and it's hard for me to think, oh, let's root for the Russian spies who are, you yeah. know, here to kill people and kidnap them, and then, uh, you know, other bad things that they're going to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, this, again, falls into the pilot syndrome that, you know, it, it has to set up the characters. You know, it introduces the neighbor who happens to be an FBI agent, which Randomly. is pretty convenient <laughs> um, in his placement, who, you know, used to work undercover, things like that. Uh, it just... I couldn't really get behind it. There were some things that like I couldn't believe. You know, I understand the reason why they had kids to assimilate to the culture, but you know, they they seem very they, inconvenient. Very inconvenient. <laughs> now they want to have the kids make their own choices. So it's like it just it seems really odd. And I they set up like the future of you know like, kind of how there's going to be turmoil between you know the the two main characters of just Wanting different views and, and, and you know yeah. how much they've done. Um, but, you know, it's nothing that I really got behind. I think the uh, music throughout this first episode was very intrusive, and it took away from the plot some heavy, like, thumping in the opening scene, and it just didn't add to the scene at all, in my opinion. It kind of distracted me. Uh, some, you know, timely music for the era that they're in, which is okay, but um, the kids don't seem of that era. They nah. seem like nope. kids of the 90s, which kind of threw me off. And so it didn't really seem like it was taking place in this culture. Uh, because the they, whole, they spoke like us. Yeah, you know? well, I was going to so, say the whole world felt like it wasn't from the 80s. Like, yeah. Besides the fact that it said 1981 on it, I was like, well, this mm -hmm. feels like 
today's suburbia. Yeah. You know? Like they're even dressed like mm -hmm. today. You know, it's, it's very weird. And then with the first person, you know, that they had their mission for, you know, there's a backstory of something awful that happened. And I, I felt that like that, without giving anything away, was just put in there to... To try to make to it try to be like yeah to yeah. try to do that and also just to try to be pushing the envelope like oh we're on FX we can do this and it's like it didn't it didn't matter and it didn't like so I don't know I really didn't I didn't like that aspect of it and there just weren't too many characters you know I, I did like the um, scene where he did confront the guy from the mall stuff like that uh, which, yeah. which is you know an attempt to get you to like these Soviet characters things like that but it just didn't feel of the of the time that it was supposed to feel like it li I thought that the girl who was the 13 year old was going to pull out a cell phone and start texting yeah because of the way yep. she was dressed the way, she acted, the, way yep. the mall looked that they're at and any everything like that you know there was I don't know so yeah. I, I didn't so that that really threw me off and took me out of it and yeah I definitely agree um yeah I I I have a problem with this because I think people are going to love this show. Um, I've already heard people say mm. that this is so great. This is such a good show, better than Homeland. For me, just didn't, there's a lot of things I had problems with, and I think it, for, unfortunately, kind of ruined the whole experience for me, much as it did for mm. you. Um, yeah, this is a total ripoff of Homeland. I mean, it's really just capitalizing on that success. And, and Homeland, which is a show that, you know, I didn't even watch the second season. I didn't really even yeah. like the premise of where it went at the end of the first season. Uh, it just seems so, like so blatantly obvious that that's what they're going for that I was just kind of like really like you can't be like a strong bit more female original. lead yeah. spy yeah like counterintelligence, counterintelligence you know doing yeah. some things different but hiding in America as you know someone for you know mm -hmm. another country so yeah so for me that was awful the the hand to hand combat was laughable <laughs> and like should have not even been put in here mm -hmm. like this I don't want to give anything away but the one scene in the garage when she's like no stay away and then she starts yeah. chopping and stuff like <laughs> it was just ter terribly awful and bad reminiscent and, of Austin Powers judo chop <laughs> yeah yeah and it was a little too soap opery for me I yeah. think it's gonna and I think it's gonna go in that angle because it's a lot of, like the family turmoil like and like you like you just said like why are the Soviets encouraging you, you to have kids to blend in if it's just gonna be so inconvenient they might wake up and walk in when you're like disposing of a body not only or, inconvenient like, but like then that. you make the choice as spies that you're gonna let your kids choose um, to yeah. be American or to be Soviets. Oh well, they can be Americans, yeah. but they can be socialists and active. And yeah, that was really nice. that's your choice when you're that's supposed the to be liberal angle there. I think unfortunately, yeah. well, it just was yeah. Plain. Um, and and then just like the the fighting between the husband and wife and and like where that kind of storyline mm -hmm. is gonna go. Uh, you know, I'm that got a little complicated towards the end when he kind of found out the backstory of the guy that they kidnapped. Um, again, this is a lot of stuff that you probably don't understand if you haven't seen it, yeah. but I just thought that that was, it, it kind of created a little bit more of an interesting relationship, but if all it is is like him against her because he wants yeah. to, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, and a lot of very convenient plot points, the fact that the very convenient. the guy moved in next door that's, you know, and then like they're going to be friends with them just because, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it's setting up a lot of convenient plot lines that you could probably see coming from a mile away yeah. and it's not I don't feel like it's going to go in a way that's really new or exciting or inventive unfortunately because I thought the marketing for this made it seem really cool like not your typical show and it really mm -hmm. to me seems like a run of the mill drama you know yeah so, I, I, I agree completely so. yeah so I mean check it out because like I said I, I've talked to a lot of people that have, have liked this a lot uh, just for me it kind of was less than a lot of other things that are on TV right now and you know, I, I don't know. I'm interested to see how this, where this goes, but probably for me won't be tuning in. Yeah, and FX doesn't uh, post right away for their on-demand. I right. think there's a week uh, gap, so we were able to check it out on FX.com or whatever their website is. So, you know, if, if you are dying to see it, you know. Yeah. It was this, and then every, you know, 12 minutes, 13 minutes, whatever it was, there was a Bud Light commercial. The same Bud Light commercial when I was watching it's like it. It was, I was watching awful. Lost. It was terrible, but you know, <laughs> first world problems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, that was the Americans. Check it out on FX.com. So now it's time to give some thanks for some awesome stuff we want to share with you. So Rob, what's your thanks today? So I am thankful for what I think is going to be the future of television and really just how we get new shows and things like that. Uh, Netflix has uh, had some original programming in the past. Uh, Lily Hammer was their first attempt at it and uh, now is their big push uh, to get into 
original programming that is just released through Netflix. Um, it, the, their show, which it is, is House of Cards, which stars uh, Kevin Spacey. He executive produces it. And also it's directed by David Fincher, which mm. is a huge name. Yeah. So they outbid, um, you know, AB, not necessarily, but, you know, the right. um, Network. networks. Thank yeah. you for, you know, the ability to do this. And it's crazy how they do it. They um, There's no waiting. They, on a certain date, they release the whole season at once. So you have it, it's like on demand, you know, just through Netflix, instant streaming, and you have it to watch at your own convenience. Uh, The next big release they have is the next season of Arrested Development, which I know for some people is just amazing. We're getting another Arrested Development, and it's awesome how it's coming to us. You know, you you could marathon it the first day. I love that there there is this idea. It's the whole basis behind anyone can now create content and I think it's very smart of Netflix just to get behind it you know they had some PR issues with you know what they were doing in the past but you know this is it they're turning into you know an HBO source too and not just having to rely on getting deals with other people but um anyway House Cards liked it uh you know saw the first two episodes it's really great the character um I didn't see the original British one I am going to definitely check that out but uh Kevin Spacey's character breaks the third wall a lot and he talks directly to you and I love that and there are witty scenes and it's really he's the smartest person in the room at all times and how he says things and then you know makes face to the camera I really enjoy that aspect and it's it's cool it you know it's now the American version so I like it, and you know, I'd, I'd recommend it. And also, I'd like to thank you know the original programming idea, which I yeah. think is. Really I wonder cool. like what the like the monetization strategy is there, because like for HBO, they have original programming. You pay the subscription mm-hmm. fee, so they release episodes, so you're obviously keeping subscribing. Well, whereas you know, TV normal mm-hmm. TVs commercials. Whereas this, like if they're releasing all one time, you could subscribe for a month. And I was reading an article also that uh, they don't know how to rate the success of this show. Um, yeah, because it's so new. But I appreciate that new because it yeah. is challenging I mean, the status yeah, quo exactly. of you know the cable conglomerates, and also um, Netflix is really trying to push this idea. So the pilot is available online for an early screening of it. It might have just been this weekend. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. you know you could probably find also just the premiere the pilot online if you want to just check that out. That is interesting because a lot of people do prefer to watch those shows in like succession too mm-hmm. so it's definitely yeah. cool alright so I'm going to thank an app that just came out for from Twitter uh, Twitter is piloting a brand new Instagram-ish app for video it's good. and it's called Vine had and its own issues recently <laughs> it, but did, it did <laughs> Vine is really cool uh, it takes us when when I think that they, they can't come up with anything new to do with apps on the iPhone mm-hmm. they surprise me and they come up with some new like thing whether it's a game that implements a new um you know, mechanic or mm-hmm. something. But Vine basically is a, a video app where you can take video up to, I think, a minute or, or so, but 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 it only records when you hold your finger on the screen. So a lot of people are doing really cool stop motion things where you like film Tremendous one thing. Tremendous stop motion And like motion it, goes, it goes nuts. Or you can just like, I just did like a random thing the other day and just like went through and it just looked so cool mm-hmm. when it was done. I saw um, some great 8-bit Mario ones. Yeah. Um, and also there is one which was great. It was uh, their version of Magic 8-Ball. Where ah, if you cool. yeah. it implemented the fact that if you clicked it, it paused it. So right, you asked a right. question, you clicked it, and then it gave you an answer, <laughs> which I thought was really creative. And they just, yeah. it, I love creativity like yeah, that too. It's, it it's just really good. cool, and it, it's just something new and fun. And you know, whether or not it's going to get to the level of Instagram, we'll see. Um, but it's definitely cool. You should check mm-hmm. it out if you have an iOS, and I think it might be out for Android. I'm not quite sure about yeah. that. But check it out. Um, it's called Vine. So we'll be back next week with some more episodes for you. Um, Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any comments for us, comment in the comment section below. Also subscribe to our channel, then you'll get all the new episodes when they come out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.